Now, I look like I know what I'm talking about, right? It's crooked. Okay, good enough. The final product you make will look like this. This is the one I made uh, a while back. I made a bigger one um, a few minutes ago. Um, it's much, the coils are bigger. What I used to make these coils was a dowel. It's a pretty thick dowel. If you're not gonna buy a spool, if you're gonna buy it by the foot, I would say buy, buy seven to 10 feet in case you mess up. First, you're gonna take the end of your copper wire. You're gonna use wire strippers. You're gonna go down to where it says, based on what gauge wire you buy, will determine what number on here that you have to go down to, to use, okay? Well, you're gonna take this down to, this is number 14, put it in there, right? You're gonna pinch it, and you're gonna feel it make a indentation, and then very gently, you're gonna loosen your grasp on the strippers, and pull like that. Okay. Very, very simple. This is what it will look like at the end. I, it'll be nice and coppery. Um, you're gonna wanna use plastic coated copper wire and not just regular copper wire because it will tarnish. Um, I would say strip off about, like I did here, about two uh, inch and a half to two inches. You're gonna wanna strip off about an inch and a half to two inches of plastic and you'll have a little plastic piece Okay, do that on both sides. Based on how tight you want your coils, if you want big chubby coils like this, like this one, you're gonna to wanna to use the big dowel. So you're gonna to wanna to buy a big dowel. If you do not wanna buy a big dowel, or you can't find one, buy a small dowel. <laughs> and um, if you, if none of that is available to you, you can use a screwdriver. Make sure you use one that's that has a long enough neck so that you have plenty of room to wrap the wire around, okay? And let me show you how you do it. We're still recording. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to want to take your thumb and you see where the copper is? You're gonna to wanna to just touch the plastic with your thumb and hold it firmly against whether you use a dowel or a screwdriver, okay? Then you're gonna to wanna to make tight loops. You're gonna to wanna to go around, but not too tight, just kind of, you know, with half inch uh, spacing between. And I'm gonna get in closer so you can see. Sorry about all the noise, the wires hitting the tripod. Uh, it'll look nice and tight like that, right? Then you just take your fingers, and if you have uh, uh, gloves, if you have leather gloves or uh, gardening gloves or any kind of gloves, I would say put them on so you don't hurt your uh, hands, but I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I've made one or two of these before, so I know what I'm doing. Anyway, you're gonna wanna go like this. You just push it together, right? You're just gonna use your brute strength and push it together, right? And you, then you slip it right off. And you see how you get those tight little coils? And yet you still have the exposed... Sorry about all the wire hitting the tripod. I shouldn't have cut uh, seven to 10 feet of wire being I'm so close, yeah. Anyway, so this is the kind of coil you'll, you'll get from using a screwdriver and you want to make sure that the top of the screwdriver the top of the neck you want to make sure that it's not not too fat or else you won't be able to slip this off and you'll be pissed around the whole thing 
And as you get it going up, like I said, squeeze it down together and keep going. And then when you get to the end, um, yeah, you'll, uh, if you get to the end and you're, you're done before you finish up your whole wire, just snip it, leave uh, a few inches at the end, snip it and strip it with your strippers. Yeah, let me show you how it works with a dowel. We gotta go to the other side for this. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't strip this side because, yeah, there's no, I already showed you how to strip a wire. Anyway, so the same, the same uh, movement. You're gonna take your thumb, you're gonna press, you're gonna leave the couple inches that's stripped uh, out and you're gonna go down a little bit and hold it firmly with your thumb then you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna coil it around and you're gonna if you can make really tight coils you can go ahead and do that but if you can see how I'm kinda of leaving about an inch to half an inch between the coils right and it's very easy to just push it down. So you just take your middle and index finger while holding the wire that you started with, with your thumb and just push down and continue to wrap. And whoop, see, good thing for the hard hat or I would have hit myself in the head. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so you get the point. And then you push it down, right? You push it down so you have it coiled around and you let it go and it'll make a little slinky of its own. Now you'll do that if you want a big, if you want big chubby coils like this one, you'll use that technique. If you want little coils like this, you will use the screwdriver technique or a very narrow dowel. This is what we're going to be using. These Ys, we're going to be attaching our antenna we make, the coiled uh, copper wire, to here to make the loop antenna. And at the end, we will connect... Um, the cable wire or coaxial cable to here and then the other side will go to the TV. So this is what it looks like in the box. I know I uh, showed this in the other video but I'll show it again. I'll read it again to you in case uh, it converts flat antenna leads to coaxial cable. So if you go to a hardware store and you're like I need something to connect something to something uh, this way you'll know what, what to say. And this, this just happens to be an RCA uh, piece. And you have this part. You'll just connect your cable wire to here. And you'll screw it in. And then you'll take the other side. And you'll screw that to the back of your TV. So now you have your coiled wire. You have your ends stripped. And this is basically what it'll look like before you fasten it with nuts, bolts, and two washers. Okay? You're, it'll, it'll look like this. It'll be bent around into a tight little slinky kind of circle. And each one of these will be connected to each one of these. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So you can get nuts, bolts, and washers independently. And these are uh, one fourth inch. So you're going to want to go with, make sure they're all the same. Or else they won't fit onto each other. So, yeah. Why do I always have gas when I'm on cam? <coughs> Sorry. I apologize. And for you weirdos that get off on that, it's a little something extra. <laughs> you're going to need... Two nuts, two bolts, and four washers. You've got a washer 
on your bow. You're going to take your exposed wire and bring it all the way to this position. And just as you wrapped the wire around the dial, uh, bleh, just as you wrapped the wire around the dowel, you're going to wrap this around the bow. Now we've got both pieces of exposed wire wrapped around the bow in between two washers with the nut on. Take the bottom of the nut with your pliers. You're going to want to take a screwdriver and put it into the top and turn. And don't worry if things are going different ways when you do that. Be very careful. I don't want anybody to get hurt and blame me. Uh, anyway, yeah, be very careful. And don't worry if things get turned all different ways when you get going because uh, copper is very pliable, flexible, and you can just turn it to however you want. So, you know, you just turn it back. As long as this connects with the copper that's on your wire that's smushed, that's sandwiched between your two washers, which you have fastened with your nut and ball, um, you will get reception. Everybody pretty much has an HDTV, so when you do your channel scan, you'll, you will want to redo your channel scan. Um, you'll want to switch your scan mode from scanning for cable channels or satellite channels to uh, scanning um, scanning antenna or ANT or AN yeah you, you you'll want to switch that up so you'll you might want to look at your uh, book to your TV I don't want anybody to be like I made the antenna and it didn't work um, you will only pick up the digital channels um, you'll only pick up the channels that have the clearest picture um, based what will determine the quality or if your TV catches the local signal or the local channel. Um, variables will be mountains, trees, um, weather, cloudiness. Uh, so you'll get the best outcome if you do it on a day when it's pretty clear outside, when it's not too windy, when it's, uh, you know, when it's nice weather, when it's sunny and nice, if you scan. But you can just uh, get going right away with it. You will pick up whatever's the closest. Um, the, cha the channels that you pick up, um, whatever you uh, see coming in will be the strongest signal. And based on your make and model of television, you'll be able to see how many bars you have um, on that channel, which is kind of cool. Uh, make me a quick video and show me your finished product. You don't have to show me the procedure of how you made it because I don't want anybody getting hurt while, uh, you know, trying to show me how you did what I uh, tried to explain in the video. But um, good luck. Um, be safe. And thank you for watching. Did I mention if you have any questions or comments, leave them for me on the video page, on, on the section below. You can just leave me a comment if you have any questions or, uh, you know, whatever, whatever about how to. Hopefully this video will not have wasted your time and you'll find it to be uh, useful and productive. And um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just Leave them for me. Um, if you'd like to make a video response and show me how your antennas that you've tried to make come out, just either, uh, you know, take a picture or uh, make a quick video. And uh, yeah, so that's that.